Ah uh, yes, it's that time again for another Status Report highlight, this time for the week of the 2nd of August 2016. And since the last Status Report, the team have mostly been focused on Point 0.61 and getting it ready for experimental. That said, there are a few things that Hicks would like to cover before we talk about the current status of each of the Point 0.61 milestone goals. Over the past two weeks, Peter and Brian have spent a good amount of time discussing two areas of DAISY, dynamic changes to the economy and the external DAISY launcher. Peter will be talking about the launcher in his portion of this status report, so Brian will talk a bit about the dynamic changes to the economy. The current iteration of the central loot economy allows for dynamic, no patch required updating of every item that spawns in DayZ. This means it includes the minimum and normal operating values of each item, the frequency it can respawn, the region of Chernerus it can spawn in. In the case of items such as magazines and piles of ammo, it can dictate the minimum and maximum ranges for how much of that item's capacity it spawns with. The reason this is being brought up is because the design team routinely will adjust these levels based upon data and behavior observed on Stable Branch, and these changes can be effective within an hour of the change occurring. Over the last few weeks, quite a few adjustments have been made on everything from the availability of certain ammo types to the available quantity of non-perishable canned goods. Thus, it makes it even more valuable for those observing bugs or general issues with this system to be specific in their reports on the feedback tracker. Make sure to detail exactly what you observed, when you observe it, and most important, what server it occurred on. To give you an example of exactly how important this data is, we've been trying internally to track down behavior in regards to certain items spawning in piles, specifically in this case, firearms. Despite the fact that the restock timer should prevent such behavior, it has been a nasty issue that has seemed to occur on the stable branch significantly easier than we have been able to reproduce it internally. That said, thanks to several dedicated feedback tracker users, we were able to isolate the issue on stable branch and have identified the cause of it. Much to the satisfaction of both Peter and Hicks, we'll now be able to resolve the issue discovered with Point 0.61. In addition to this, today the design team will be introducing changes to firearm and ammunition, tiering and nominal values. Like all things, we'll need to wait and observe over the coming week to see the impact as existing availability within the economy on players in camps can and will impact how this behaves. As these changes become effective in the stable branch wide economy, it is vital that if you notice an issue, you file a feedback tracker issue with as much information as possible. Enough about the economy though, let's take a look at where we are with Point 0.61 development goals. Point 0.61 milestone goals are Server login queue Feature implemented, system under review with internal QA teams Merge of new audio technology from Armor 3 Eden update Tech implemented fully into DayZ Existing sounds and configs from legacy system functioning properly Backwards compatibility with legacy sound technology Update of weapon sounds for new audio technology 21 weapons ready. Work continues on remaining firearms. YouTube channel devlog preview upcoming. Of course, I will cover the YouTube devlog on the weapon sounds on my channel also, and the weapons that are ready are SKS, Sporter, Trumpet, Repeater, AKM, Stair AUG, The Foul, SVD, MP5K, 1911, CR75, Derringer, Flare Gun, FNX, Glock 19, Longhorn, Magnum, Amphibia, P1, Makarov, and the Red 9. Dynamic spawning of infected. Feature implemented into internal branch, QA teams are doing initial passes and providing programmers with initial issues. Predators, Wolves. The team are currently working on several key issues with predators, specifically being addressed currently are issues with navigation in urban dense areas, overall physics related issues, damage application against non-player targets, AI targeting priority. It's no secret that as far as DayZ and Point 0.61 goals go, Predator AI is a big addition to gameplay, and clearly the largest at-risk area for milestone goal slippage. That said, the team are still very confident in their progress on the feature, and the pace at which it is moving forwards. They will continue to update us all as to the status of this milestone goal with status reports. Now let's see what Peter has to say. As many parts of the game are still under active development, the main menu, with such crucial parts as the server browser and no exceptions either, we all love the character presence in the environment at the main menu giving you a nice feeling, and it's the point where immersion starts to kick in, but why not take it further and more personal? Everything in Daisy is revolving around your character, and the main menu with the server browser should follow the same formula. At the main menu you will be able to thoroughly list all of your available characters across all shards, coupled with additional information like visualization of character and his gear, name and actual stats help you to select the character you want to play with. The selected character at the main menu then acts as a filter in the optional next step, which is the server browser. The new server browser will filter out only the available servers from the shard where the selected character belongs to. 
This added layer of filtration eliminates the need for memorizing what character you have where, as well as any possible confusion after logging onto a server just to find out that it isn't the character you wanted to play with. The new server browser also comes with other useful changes and functions to provide a better and uncluttered user experience. There will be only three tabs used for high level and clear differentiation between official servers community servers and servers on LAN as other unnecessary tabs for favorites, friends, history, and remote will be removed and become filters instead. Filters are now part of the server browser screen directly, so they are always visible and at hand to easily check what's being filtered. Filter parameters have three different states, include, exclude, and ignore, so their setting can be handcrafted to exactly what you want to see. Columns in the server list were also reduced to a bare minimum as most of their information were doubled in server details. You can see and sort filtered servers according to their name, time of day, population, and ping. Similar to filters, server details is no longer a separate pop-up dialog window as every row in the server list is independently expandable to unveil additional server details like description, public, private, mode, version, IP, and others so it's easy to compare two or more servers. Above all of that, the external launcher will behave as a master filter, which means that the game server browser will show only the servers related to the mod which DayZ was launched with. However, Peter doesn't want to go over the external launcher right now, as it's another topic we will be talking about in the future. Now let's see what Victor has to say. Animations usually take a lot of time, but on the other hand, when we finish a batch, there is usually many new things. Fortunately, in the past weeks, there were a couple of finished animation batches, so this time there is a bit more news. New animations and graph for drawing a bow have been added, with advantages of a coming system. Drawing will be available while walking as well. The jamming unjamming for pistols has been created, and there is already ongoing work on bolt action rifles. Not to forget about vehicles, we have finished a set of animations for upcoming vehicles and started on the next one. Also, some more specific animations for attaching vehicle parts have been created. Last week, Victor was going through the process of reviewing and updating poses. Since the character can put almost anything in his hands, we have at the moment poses for clothes, small items, large items, firearms, weapons, and many more. That makes in total over 800 animation poses. Victor has updated some and polished some to give more of a natural look. And last but not least, there is always some more polishing for the animation graph of the new player character. More about some recent changes from Adam, our technical animator responsible for most parts of the player graph. These past weeks, Adam has been heavily focused on making the movement system feel more natural. For such a simple term, it is quite the complex task. He started reviewing the stance system for the player's viewpoint, and he thinks he's got quite a nice iteration for the stance changes. For example, you're lying down in the grass near the airfield tents, and you thought you saw movement in the distance. You start to stand up, but realize that it was in fact another player. And any time during that animation, you can decide to go back to prone, finish standing up, or go to crouch instead, and aim your weapons, all at the same time. If you then realize that the bandits noticed you, you start to run, still in crouch, and stand up while moving, and leg it, ultimately getting picked off by their SVDs. While it is a small change, it has been a whole new dimension of feel, and Adam can't wait to put it into our hands. And that's all for the status report highlight for the 2nd of August 2016. Some really good information there, I especially like choosing your character for the hive or the shard that you were playing on, as to know what character and gear you have before you even start. There's quite a few times I've logged on and thought, ah shit, but don't go anywhere yet. We still have some extra information if you've missed it on the Daisy Trello board as always. Some images of hydraulic fluid and oil, very high detailed as always, another useful item for your vehicles and or base equipment on the ever-growing list. And talking about vehicles, we have the multi-car. This is a very interesting one to me, it looks a bit like a golf cart with a big bed on it. Could be good, could be interesting. There's a nice little bit of video as well on a turntable. Let me know what you think of this vehicle. This could be funny to see, driving around, escaping a gunfight. And finally, we have a different looking church. I'm not sure if this is a change to the existing internals of the church or church 2, as these images are labeled under church 02A interior. So is this a new church, like the second church 02A? or just the same church with a new interior. It does look similar to the existing one, but I guess we'll wait and see on that one. As always, thank you for watching. Remember to leave a like as it helps the channel out a lot. You won't believe how much. All links will be in the description below, and I'll see you peeps next time.